that allow linemen to push a ball carrier these days. When you're in that scrum and guys are pushing you, you getting jostled around a lot, or, or is it is it tough in there? I guess. No, I'm thankful. You know, <laughs> they're uh, getting extra push, you're getting extra yards. Anytime we move forward, it's always positive. So that's a good thing. Derek, coming up on your 100th career game in the NFL, looking back at just like the last seven years, has it gone by fast or has it gone by slow to you? How would you kind of describe the, the pace the last couple of years for you? Old? No, but no, it's a blessing to be able to play in your 100th game. I'm very thankful. Um, and um, I've been blessed to be able to play this game and make it this far and just keep striving and you know, do all I can to be the best player, best teammate I can be for this team. What's maybe something you, you of today would have told, would tell your younger self uh, when you first came in the league about what to expect, how things might go? Uh, watch the media. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, um, I just, you know, just continue to grind, uh, be grateful um, for the for, for the whole journey, um, embrace everything, um, uh, grow every day. There's always room to grow, always room to learn. Be a great person, um, um, be a great teammate, and then everything else will take care of itself. Was it ever frustrating when early in your career when you weren't getting a ton of touches? Yeah, it was, but it's all uh, God's plan and his timing, um, and that's what you just got to understand, that his timing is always perfect, and um, just trust him believing what he's, he's putting you through. Third quarter struggles pretty well documented for the for the offense. Um, you go follow the question. <laughs> ten, ten, ten times of the 13 first drives, you guys have gone three and out. One of the things some of the other guys in the locker room have, have said is they're trying to raise the energy coming out of, of mm -hmm. halftime. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's been part part of the issue? Yeah, um, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> and I think we just got uh, four more games to try to turn it around and um, fix it as quickly as possible. And that's all you can do is just uh, raise the energy, um, have heavy emphasis on it, and then work on it out here, let it translate to the game. Why do you think maybe it's been down, or is that maybe just a habit you could fall into? I think we just haven't been um, executing. That's what it come down to. Just got to gotta go out there and execute and keep the drive alive, and we haven't been doing that. But like I said, we've got four games left to put more urgency on it, more emphasis on it, and come correct it out here um, during the week. So Sunday, we're good at it. As you guys came in here, you know, to try to flip the page to L.A., did, did you like, kind of have to remind yourself that you guys are on top of the division and, and still have, you know, ultimately control of, of your outcome? Yeah, I think so. I think, we, you know, you just got to look at it. You still got everything um, in, in front of us. And, um, you know, just continue to strive to get better because um, however it goes, you still got to come in and work and, um, and do your job. So I think that's, that's just how you got to look at it, you know, just come in and get better and, you know, Focus on one game at a time. Some of the other leaders on the team have said that they, you know, want to take it upon themselves to make the environment like more positive. As a leader yourself, what have you done to, to contribute to that? Yeah, um, I think, well, like I said on Sunday, I think uh, leaders on this team, you know, we got to step up and, and do more, whatever that requires. And, um, you know, Coach always talks about positive energy, having great demeanor, demeanor you know, through throughout the week on meetings and practice and, you know, people feed off each other's energy. You know, we're all a team, we're all a family, so we got to feed off each other, and I think God's been trying to do that. You guys are maybe struggling a little bit like this, Derek. Does it help that I think just about everybody on the on the roster has never had a losing season here? Does that kind of, I guess, culture, you know, is there an expectation of winning now that, that helps, you know, when, when you guys are in a, in a, in a stretch like this? I think just <clears throat> getting back to uh, playing our style of football, and, um, you know, that's it's great about how we play. If, you know, the players here are not having a losing season and, um, you know, going out there and do what we need to do to get a win. And like I said, just getting back to how we want to play and um, the things that we do good at and, you know, do whatever we can to get a win. You guys talked about, you know, talked about staying positive. All. Jeffrey yesterday said it's motivating for him to get this monkey off, off his back of a three-game losing streak. You, is, that a, is that a word you'd use too as far as – what you want to try to get done? Yeah, yeah, definitely motivating. You know, we're coming off of three losses in a row. Um, it hasn't been that way in a while. So you're just doing whatever you can to, to get a win, trying to find everything little as possible to go out there and get a win and, you know, work as hard as you can so that can happen on Sunday. Kevin mentioned a, a saying, I guess, that's gone around the locker room, he says, which is a rising tide lifts all the boats. 
around you, what does that mean to you? And like, what has that kind of done to help the, the, the vibe in the locker room, I guess? Yeah, I think that's a question he's asked, you know, just um, what, are, what are the leaders doing? What is everybody doing to, you know, to lift one another, have positive energy, um, coming to work, ready to uh, go to work, and, you know, bring it, bringing everybody with you, um, coming in wanting to get better. And that, you know, affects everybody by the way you carry yourself and how you work when you're here. As part of that, what do you say to guys who maybe are, are struggling a little bit that maybe haven't been playing particularly well? Yeah, just stick with it. Keep working. Um, you know, and um, you know, everybody's had struggles. I've had struggles, and um, that just comes with the game. It comes with the territory. But you just got to keep working, keep having faith, and trust and believe in you know the coaching, your technique, and your ability, and then um, everything happens where it's supposed to. Uh, maybe some uncertainty around Hassan in the last couple of weeks. I mean, what what has that maybe done as far as preparation leading up to leading up the game? Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's obviously difficult when you have one of your better players on special teams um, hasn't played the past couple of days or games. Uh, but it's good. Julius has got an opportunity. He's went back there at kickoff return, done a really good job for us, which has been exciting. Um, and then we just got to piece some other guys together and give those guys an opportunity to help us out on special teams. Trail had a, had a couple kind of interesting uh, punt, punt returns there. What, do you guys generally have a rule of thumb if the ball hits for your punt return, or is it just kind of leave them up to their best? Yeah, sh sure. I mean, obviously, we've had um, some difficulty with consistency back there of catching all those punts. Um, and, you know, we got to continue to harp on the communication part when the ball is kicked punt it short like that. Um, usually Logan Cook's a guy who averages over 50 yards, and when he hits him the ball 38 yards, we got to come up and catch it. And if we can't, you know, the biggest part about that is communication, and we got to continue to yell, um, you know, at those guys who are blocking for us um, to get them away from the football. Um, so that's been a big um, part for this week and, and the whole year of just trying to communicate with those guys. As far as those guys. Picking it up on the bounce, yeah. do, you, do you just leave it up to their best judgment usually? Or? Uh, yes, and, and the reason why we end up doing it, we want them to square up on that ball as much as they possibly can because we tell them on an average when the ball bounces, we could possibly lose 15 yards of field position. So when we get a bad punt like that, we try to square up to the ball and if we can grab it and just go down or even get two to three yards, you know, we're winning at least 16, 17 yards on field position because if we let it bounce, it's going to go 15 yards easily. When a team has been scuffling like you guys have been the last three weeks trying to get off the schneid, a lot of times special teams can provide a spark with a big play here or yeah. there. Are those things hard to manufacture? They just kind of come organically like a a punt return or a block punt that goes, you know, for a score? I mean, we try to manufacture them every game. Um, you know, it, it is, uh, we got to continue to provide our team a spark um, and give us something that we can win and help us win games. Big return, a block punt, all those different types of things. I thought our guys got a really good lift with uh, Julius having a nice, decent return on his very last one. Um, so we'll look to build off of that, but we got to get our punt return game going. Um, and that's uh, us going up and catching the ball and working up and getting vertical and trying to provide that spark. What were some other options there as punt return? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, Robert can do it, but with Dontrell out. Sure. Again, uh, you know, we're, we're putting different guys there a lot. Um, you know, Mason Kinsey could be another guy that we could possibly work into it. I know he's on our practice squad, but uh, he's another guy that'll get a look. So um, we're just trying to find someone who's going to go up there and catch the ball and give the ball back to our offense. Randy's issues comfortably behind him now are you confident in that yeah sure I mean we're doing stuff to help him out during practice um, we're not kicking him as much uh, and then even during pregame we got a jugs machine out there so he's not kicking off as much but yeah he feels great um, you know we're excited that he goes out there and um, you know kicks off for us and makes field goals and uh, we'll continue to monitor his progress and, and try not to get a lot of stuff on his plate the punt uh, coverage was better this week was the was the hang time different or, or what yeah, uh, the first one wasn't what we were looking for, but our guys, I thought, did a really good job of just understanding lanes. Um, we really worked on this this past week of guys just kind of staying in their lanes as much as they possibly can. Then the last two, we thought they were really good hang times, and that just allows our gunners to go down there to make plays or even stop the returner from getting vertical. Uh, and then the other guy's just going to go and clean it up. So I thought the guys did a really good job um, in improving from the past week.
What made Ola ex expendable from a special teams perspective? Yeah, uh, you know, Ola was a, a good special teams player for us last year. And, uh, you know, I think it deals with numbers when guys are injured um, and guys are trying to come back and things like that. You know, we got some guys that have stepped up. Um, and, and have played a role for Ola um, when he was down. So we felt comfortable with the other guys going in there and doing it. I, we wish nothing but the best for Ola. Um, I really liked him as a person and, a, and as a football player, so hopefully he gets onto another team and does well for him. Hey, kick returner aside from Hassan, who I know you're hoping to get back, and Julius. Anybody else in the mix? Player. Yeah, again, uh, you know, Mason, if, if CJ's back up, he's another guy. Um, you know, we're going to try out guys that, uh, you know, can go up there and catch it and try to provide a little spark for us um, in the return game. But, uh, yeah, a lot of guys will be end up getting reps again today for it. Um, and we'll see, you know, who's, who's fitting best for our team uh, when we dress the 48 guys. Sunday on the the, on one of the kickoffs, on, on the kickoff team, I counted, and there were eight of the 11 guys were not here when the season started. Uh, is that a difficult thing to cope with? Uh, so our big thing is no excuses. Um, you know, it doesn't matter. It, we're we're going to coach the guys up, whether they get here in training camp, whether they get here week seven, week 10, week 11. Um, we got to coach those guys up and, you know, the best part about it is uh, these guys are willing to go and do it. We just got to continue to coach them up on everything that we are looking for. We had way too many guys over on the right-hand side uh, when they try to hit that sideline return, and it usually is just caused by one guy who will end up going the wrong way, and that created a log jam for us. Um, we got bailed out by a holding call um, with that. But, you know, it doesn't matter who's out there. Um, we got to go out there and do, do our job. Talked, you know, just about keeping a good attitude, trying to stay upbeat. How have things been maybe as far as meeting rooms and guys wanting to kind of improve their craft and get better? Honestly, it's been great to see. I mean, the guys just support one another, encouraging one another, uh, but also, you know, that kind of uh, community correction. You know, like, hey, we know what has gone wrong. We know what has uh, caused some of these uh, stumbles and, uh, you know, working to, to correct them. So. You know, I, I couldn't be happier at, considering the situation we're in, uh, where the mood of the, the group is. Production for, for tight ends here last few games, Todd, has that you know, specifically been designed? Are you, are you seeing more things maybe from Chig now that he's had a few games under his belt than, than he did early in the season? Yeah, I think the, the early part of the game, um, absolutely. You know, second half, we were basically in, in two minutes uh, after the first couple of drives. So. It uh, became difficult to go to any of really the, the planned stuff uh, that way. But I, I think they've done a nice job. You know, we've gotten that third and extra long, tried to get them the ball, uh, and, it, you know, didn't execute the block on the front side of it. Um, but, you know, looking for creative ways to give him touches for sure. Is he, you know, is he a much different player now than, than in the first few games as a, as a rookie? Or, or I think he's gained confidence, you know, and that helps guys play faster. And when they know what they're doing and, and how to execute it, they go play faster. And so what I've noticed from him is just that play speed translating from practice into games, uh, which obviously gives the quarterback more confidence to, to get him the football. You, uh, you obviously go through the game plan with Ryan every week. And what do you like? What do you not like? Something similar ever take place with Derek and, and particular runs he might want in, in, against a, a defense or whatever? Yeah, Derek's answer is usually, uh, I, like, I like it all, any run. I like any run. Uh, but, no, you know, throughout the course of the week, I may have a, a little uh, sidebar conversation. With him, hey, what do you think of this one? Hey, we made a tweak to that scheme. Uh, you know, you still feel comfortable with that. And then certainly in the game, uh, you know, I'll check in with him during the game and say, okay, is there one you want to get back to? You know, maybe it's one that he, he – just missed a, a read or a cut or, or stumbled a little bit or something like that, and he wants to see it again. So, yeah, there's constant communication, particularly when a, a guy like that works as hard as he does. Uh, he deserves input. On the note of Derek, it's been, I think, 14 straight games since he's down the end zone in the fourth quarter specifically. Just what do you guys have to do building up to that? In the second half in general, we've heard all season long, but specifically with him utilizing him down there when it, when it matters. Yeah, in in particular, last week we got to stay out of two minute. You know what I mean, and that um, that is a good starting point. And then secondly, it's just that continued belief, right? Just chipping away at things, staying consistent, believing in who we are, uh, and, and then not making the same mistakes twice. You know, we've had some opportunities down there, 
Uh, you know, and, and unfortunately, we've, we've had some repeated errors. You know, I'll go back and, and think about the Philly game and the short yardage where we had an opportunity to to pour it up in there on, on short yardage against an advantageous look and then didn't get that ball snapped. You know, uh, things like that. It, those kind of self-inflicted uh, missed opportunities. Do you feel like this group is responding to those types of situations where they, they can fix this with, with kind of four games left? And I know it's not all fixable, but just those little things that keep on kind of plaguing you guys? Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's not necessarily all fixable. It's not all broken either. And, uh, you know, that's something that I think the, the guys are really holding on to right now is saying, hey, there's a lot of good stuff in there too. Has it been overall good enough? It has not. And that's why we've had the results that we've had. Uh, and, and we're striving to make sure that we're doing those things better at a higher level and a more consistent level. Uh, but the guys know who we are and they know what we're capable of doing. And uh, we just need to get back to doing that. Starting third quarters, guys have talked a lot about execution and yeah. energy. Can you talk to the uh, adjustment part of coming out of halftime and how it's not your 10 3 and outs in 13 games? Yeah, uh, certainly not You know, something that uh, we feel we're clicking on all cylinders coming out of halftime, but we've had uh, basically inventing new ways of putting ourselves behind the sticks. You know, last week, for example, taking you through that drive, we come out of halftime repeating a run uh, that we liked from the first half, made an adjustment to a combination block, didn't execute that well uh, on the front side, but on the back side, you know, we get an illegal chop block. Now we're first and 22. I can hand the call sheet to anybody in the stands at that point. You know, it, you're, you're behind the sticks uh, and you're just looking, you know, to try to get half back, get half back and get yourself in third and manageable. We wound up in third and 27. You're not going to convert very many of those. Uh, and, and so we've got to avoid those uh, negative plays. You know, I, I think that we've shown as an offense that when we gain positive yards and not even necessarily big chunks in the second half, I, I think back to last year, that was a strength of ours coming out of halftime and being able to uh, get some things going. And so we just need to be more consistent, uh, staying on schedule so that we're not in these second and extra long, third and extra long I looks. Know, I know some play callers come, uh, manage fine time at halftime to kind of do a mini script. Mm -hmm. Uh, do, do you do that or try to do that? Yeah, to an extent, yes. You know, we certainly uh, rank what runs we want to come back to in what order, talk about complimentary uh, play passes and, and things of that nature. Yeah, there's a dialogue with the entire staff, again, with taking input from some of the players. We just need to go execute better, and i got to help put them in situations to do that. You call, that the flicker, to, you call the flea flicker on the first play out of the extra tackle package. Yeah, It didn't work, but did it do anything to make – the, the extra tackle package a little less predictable when you went back to it later in the game? Well, I think that it certainly kept that post player backed up a little bit, you know, and uh, and they had shown, you know, versus some extra tackle of playing that post player pretty low and, and getting him involved uh, in the run fit. And so I think it, you know, anytime you take a play action shot, you love to hit him, but sometimes just showing that you're willing to launch the ball down the field uh, sends a message. With you wanting to create, you know, that sense of urgency coming out of uh, in the second half, have you considered like going tempo or something like that? And and if you have, like, what does tempo do for an offense on, and, and the urgency side? Of yeah, and we've gotten into tempo a couple times uh, early in the second half. You know, I know I sound like a broken record, so forgive me for this, but it's hard to get in tempo if you're not gaining yards. It's hard to get into your no huddle if you're not picking up first downs because now you may have a two tight end or three tight end set on the field and you wind up in third and seven. That's not real conducive to staying on the ball and staying no huddle. So they all complement one another and turbo or, or no huddle has been something that we've used quite a bit around here. Uh, but it's difficult to get into if you're not you know, gaining yards. So what's the, I, I know you're searching for it. What's, what's the the failure to execute, the consistency of penalties. I think you've had eight on those those first drives. Yeah. What's the message you're beating home about that? Why do you think it keeps cropping up coming out of the locker? Yeah, I think we need to just trust our technique. I think we need to play aggressive and trust our technique and not try to do too much. Some of those penalties have been holds where we let our hands get outside the framework of the defender's body. Some of them have been being extra aggressive, like Jeff on the backside uh, with the illegal cut block. You know, we just need to do our job the way we've been trained to do it and not try to do too much. Sometimes I feel there's some pressing there, you know, and, and that can lead to uh, some inconsistent techniques. Uh, but overall, 
we just need to trust our training and, and go execute. It's it's offensive line doing this right, right now, Todd. Getting away from the penalties, you know, you talk about shooting yourself in the foot. Is there something that you could do just to help the offensive line up front, like as a play caller, maybe for a quick game or something like that to, to keep Tannehill from under so much duress? Yeah, I think that we've, uh, you know, we've had some mixed success uh, with those quick game passes, you know, and, and certainly, uh, you know, that's something that, that we've uh, employed throughout the course of the season. The early part of the second half, you know, sometimes uh, you can try to get something off the call sheet that you've had marinating there for a little while. Uh, and then sometimes you're, you're trying to get back to something that you made a little adjustment to on the sideline. So as a play caller, I'm trying to put our guys in the best position uh, to go execute and play fast. And, uh, and, and clearly, we got to come up with the right answer for that uh, going forward. What's the offensive line you feel like doing best right now? I guess if there's something it can hang its hat on. Yeah, I thought we ran the ball well in the first half last week. You know, I thought we got back to, uh, you know, who we are as a, as a run offense. I thought guys were finishing. You know, I thought you saw uh, people pushing the pile. Obviously, at the end of the first quarter, uh, you know, played 22 there. We were, you know, uh, showing who we are as, as an offense and, and our demeanor. Uh, you know, that was hard to carry over and continue into the second half because of the game situation and what we did to ourselves in the first two drives. So uh, I hope we can build on what we did in the first half of that game, minus the turnovers, of course. And, uh, and and look forward to seeing what that looks like these you know next four games. Yeah, I think just uh, his instincts, the speed, the size, the physicality, um, all those things he brings you know to our defense. So kind of see how these next few days play out and see where he's at. Just two years in a row, you you've had all kinds of combinations at those inside linebacker spots because of injuries and whatnot. How challenging has that been for, like, what kind of effect do you think that has had? Yeah, I think just the familiarity with, with each other in terms of communication, understanding, like, you played with somebody long enough, there's kind of a second sense where you kind of know where each guy's going to be and you're confident in that. And I think you start playing with some new pieces. I think that you got to increase the communication pre-snap. Um, to make sure everybody's on the same page and you kind of get a feel as as these guys play together more and more You kind of get a feel of who they are and where they're going to be and how they play certain techniques And I think all that stuff comes into play How does a potential archer return affect maybe you know, not only the front but maybe the back too and then coverage? Yeah, I mean obviously what he brings for the production rushing the passer um, Has been huge for us last year and then obviously this year up until he got hurt. So I mean he's got tremendous value for us um, We'll kind of see where the week goes with him and how he's feeling. And he's out there doing a little bit yesterday, and we'll kind of see where it goes. So, um, again, I, I do think it's it's a piece we've been missing, you know. Um, it's tough to replace that production. Um, so hopefully we can get him back. You have a guy like that you, maybe that's on the verge of coming back and to be an impact player. Do you have like certain things in the game plan that's like, well, if he's available, we can use this, and if he's not, we won't? Yeah, I mean, I think that with every position right now, from obviously to Nico in the front to the back end guys, I think with all those guys, we, we kind of have contingency plans based on what's going on um, and really just our comfort level with certain guys of what we're willing to do schematically, right? Some of that stuff comes into play. So that's something that evolves as the week goes day by day, just how they're feeling. Um, and you kind of put percentages on it, right, in terms of what you're going to rep as the week kind of finishes out. Um, but it is something you got to work through as a coaching staff when you deal with injuries and guys kind of questionable, so to speak. How tough is Herbert to defend as, from his arm string to just being able to just sling it all over the field? Yeah, he's talented. He's got he's got an unbelievable arm. He's accurate. Um, I mean, he's really good on the move. I think last week I heard something 150 yards outside the pocket. Um, so he is. He's, he adds a. There's a lot of different dynamics to him. Um, we got to do a great job, a better job than we've been doing these past two weeks of really executing as a group, right? We got to understand where guys are going to be. We got to make sure we're challenging, and ultimately, we got to win some one on ones, whether that's up front or in the back end. We got to find ways to win some of these one on ones that we haven't really won here these past couple weeks. Some of your guys are saying that he's similar to Josh Allen. Do you see some of those? similarities and how advantageous is it that you already played Josh Allen? Yeah, I think the arm strength, you know, the arm strength, being able to put the ball wherever you, wherever he really wants to put it um, is there. I mean, I don't think they run him like Josh Allen in terms of all the scheme quarterback runs, that type of stuff. So I think they're different in that regard. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, you're going to have to defend the whole field and you better be tight or he's going to find it. He's going to fit it in there. I mean, you guys all, all saw the third down conversion late in the game last week that Keenan Allen's gloved and he found a way to put it in there and, and they catch him, you know, they got extremely talented receivers on the outside um, and coming out of the backfield with Eckler. So we're going to have to do a good job, make sure we're tight on these guys and contesting them as best we can. And hopefully we can knock a few down. Yeah, I mean, they, they find him. I think he's got 93 catches on the year, which is incredible um, for a running back. I think anytime that quarterback feels that he's got him, he's going to take give it to him, you know, and they use him in the screen game. They use him in check downs, and he's he's unique in the fact that he uh, he's extremely good after the catch. He makes guys miss, but at the same time, he's – He's a little bit stockier build. He's powerful, so he can kind of lower his shoulder and get some extra yards that way. But he's a viable option on every down in the passing game for them. It's been a while since you guys have had a turn. I think uh, the, the Broncos game, Terrence Mitchell's pick was the last one. What's going on there? How can you guys generate more of those turnovers that are so precious? Yeah, I think it goes back to we got to find ways to affect the quarterback, right? To either speed his clock up or potentially get the ball off of him. Um, and then in the back end, we got to be able to play with some vision. we got to be able to break on some throws. And when we have opportunities, we got to make them. Like the past two weeks, we've dropped two, you know, and one ended up being seven for them. That's a major turning point in that game last week. So we're, we're harping. It's one thing to make them earn it, but something that goes into making them earn it is we got to make the plays when they're there for us, right? Like we got to take advantage of our opportunities. What do you like about, about Hooker and the nickel and, and how much does it help that you're allowing McCreary to kind of Stay outside, but yeah, I think it takes some stuff off of Roger. I do. I think he can focus solely on the outside, and because they are, we've talked about before, they're they're different positions, um, different skill sets of wide receivers you're going against. Um, just the mental aspect of it, you can further enhance your your learning week to week. If you're more focused on one position, you can dive into the offense even more, right? And the skill sets of the players you're going against. Whereas if you're learning two positions schematically for us, that might take away some of that uh, personnel study, right? So I think it's the limitation, just limiting him um, in terms of what he's able to learn week in and week out has, has helped him. Were you on Hooker thinking that slot is his primary position right now? Yeah, I mean, where we're at right now, everything's week to week with us. I mean, just based on who we have available, we're kind of at that point in the season right now. Um, but he's, he's a guy that can handle it. It's a lot different asking Amani Hooker to go and do that versus a rookie in Roger McQuarrie, right? And I, I do, I think there's a lot more really similarities in what we do schematically from that safety to nickel than even potentially that outside corner to nickel, you know? So in terms of some of the zone drops we do and some of the things we ask that guy to do there. So, um, I mean, to answer your question, it is truly week to week right now, trying just to piece together and find a way to get the best 11 out on the field. Roger done well as a, as during his rookie season. What are some things maybe he needs to do to do better to close strong? Yeah, I think just with him, it's consistency, right? Um, I think he had a, a solid game last week other than really the drop pick there at the end of the half. Um, but he, he challenges. That hasn't really went anywhere. I, th I think just the details of his technique at times, especially down the field, um, that that's showing up a few times here recently. So just continuing. It's not all about the line of scrimmage. You still got to be able to play on body, be tight, play with proper leverage and technique as you get on down the field. Everything isn't just about the line of scrimmage in this league. And these guys are going to continue to find ways and use their technique to find ways to separate down the field. So that would be probably one area I would kind of target for him.